What's going on everybody? Mortem here, this time bringing you another video about Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous, specifically in regards to its upcoming DLC, A Dance of Masks, out later in June, and with it it is going to be bringing 11 new archetypes to the game, or effectively classes that you can choose to play the game as, because when you're looking at this giant list of classes and archetypes, as you try to find your way through character creation, I know that just about everybody must be thinking there's not quite enough of these. We actually need specifically 11 more to really round this list out. That was the squeaky wheel that needed the grease. And I say that with the full confidence of someone who has very likely spent more hours than just about anyone with the express purpose of trying to onboard new players to this game that I love. The most common criticism the game gets is definitely that it's too easy to make a character and that we needed more options. So I'm very glad to bring you news on this front. But all of that sarcasm aside, I am actually pretty excited about these new archetypes. Some of them sound really cool and I wanted to go over them, as Alcat has released some information on that front discussing the generalities of which ones they are, what classes they affect, etc. But these aren't the only thing that got recently announced. I'm probably not going to make a video for this specifically, so I wanted to mention it here. If you missed a recent update that they put out, it looks like the Devil Mythic Path is getting properly fleshed out with this upcoming DLC as well, with the Mythic Path itself receiving a full-blown quest that I believe is meant to revolve around the corruption of Queen Galfrey, according to their own post about it. But that's not what we're here for today, so let's get to talking about these archetypes and what to expect. Now, do keep in mind I don't have a ton of footage or access to any beta gameplay for these guys who are mostly just going to be discussing them, so you can feel free to mostly just listen to this if you want. But first and foremost, we have the Drunken Master archetype for the Monk. I would say a pretty well-known conceptual idea. The drunken master monk just interacts with the monk's key points in order to generate them via simply being intoxicated. You can get extra key points from being intoxicated as well as later on the ability to produce alcohol, and you also get, I believe, some probably passive bonuses from simply being drunk. So pretty straightforward archetype. I think conceptually everybody gets what this is. Which brings us to our second one, which is the Slayer Bloodseeker. Now this is an interesting one to me because it was developed in-house by Owlcat, and it was inspired by an anime series. So the Bloodseeker here, instead of getting Slayer talents, gains access to a bunch of new abilities around biting and blood, of course, and essentially they'll be able to perform bite attacks, which are already in the game, and this will give them blood points, and then they can spend those blood points on new abilities. Now, what I'm on the fence for with this Bloodseeker archetype is that Slayer talents are really strong. They make that class what it is. So to take all of them away and replace it with these abilities, these abilities would need to also be extremely strong to make that trade-off worth it. So while it's a cool enough concept, and I get what they were going for without seeing the specific mechanics of the abilities in front of me, it's hard to say how good this one will actually be. So we're going to move on to our third one with the Bard's Chalaxian Diva. This one is basically about making a bard slightly more aggressive. They'll essentially get a scream alongside other more offense-related abilities that should, in theory, be able to enhance what they can do combat-wise, of course, but again, the specifics here are important. Bard already gets a lot of really cool archetypes, so it'll be interesting to see where this one kind of slots into the list, but it's certainly got potential to be pretty cool. Now, in a somewhat similar vein, the Scald class is getting the Insider archetype, which is going to grant them access to a sneak attack and the ability to sort of debuff enemies and make them easier to hit. They're going to be able to upgrade their sneak attack, apparently even with the rogue's advanced abilities, and then their little blurb about it mentions being able to combine this with the inspired rage ability of a Scald, which I think will be interesting. But overall, Scald is already a very strong class all on its own. There are plenty of ways to build a Scald that can even be used to tackle unfair difficulty. I made an unfair difficulty build for Scald, but this does sound like a pretty cool way to play one as well. Now, with our fifth archetype, we then have the Titan Fighter archetype for the fighter. This one is pretty straightforward, but I think the implications of that straightforward change are wide-reaching. So the Titan Fighter can basically wield two two-handed weapons. Now, while they don't specifically say here, I assume this is probably just a straight implementation of the 
archetype that already exists in the TTRPG for this because this is just exactly that and in the tabletop version the Titan fighter forgoes their armor bonuses for bonuses to reduce the penalty of using these weapons simultaneously and also getting a bonus to various weapon maneuvers or combat maneuvers like a bull rush that kind of thing and while that's pretty interesting on its own I think where this archetype is going to be really impactful is the fact that there's a lot of really fantastic to handed weapons in the game, and getting to use two of them at the same time is likely going to be very effective, assuming that they don't do anything weird with the implementation of the two-weapon fighting feats in regards to this specific archetype, because this one should actually get its ability to dual wield right at level one. So you could take this as a one-level dip, and then take the two-weapon fighting feats with another class, for instance, and make a really interesting multi-class off the top of my head. So that's certainly an idea. But Moving right along, then we have number six with the Living Grimoire Inquisitor. So they specifically mention that this is a reimagining of the original archetype from the TTRPG. This is also one that just exists, but they've obviously made some changes. Now, right away, they mention the Living Grimoire's Sacred Tome, that they can use it as a weapon, and that at max level, they get a potential one-hit kill via their Word of God ability. So I don't know exactly what they've changed here, so this one's a little difficult to talk about, but I can tell you what I know about this one from the TTRPG, which is that it changes the Inquisitor's casting modifier from Wisdom to Intelligence. Their Living Grimoire takes on the aspects of a War Priest's sacred weapon, basically meaning it will get better as they level up, as it's essentially the only weapon they can use. So its base damage doesn't matter as much as your level, and they could tattoo second level or lower spells onto themselves to cast once per day as an ability in addition to their regular casting. And then, as I already mentioned, their big capstone was their level 20 Word of God ability that allows them to force an enemy to make a saving throw or simply die. Now, what I think will be interesting with this archetype in particular is whether or not they changed it in a substantial way that allows it to be multi-classed, because as you might have gathered from everything I just mentioned, this class class is best as a pure class, uh, 20 levels of the entire thing, basically because of the way a lot of its abilities work. It would be a bit challenging to multi-class this, in my opinion, so I'm curious if any of their changes to it will be with that in mind. That said, moving right along to number seven, we have the Sable Company Marine for the Ranger class. So they let you, as a ranger, mount a griffin, which they are presumably making use of the griffin models from the last Sarkorians DLC, which is going to let you use it as a pet. And if it's anywhere nearly as useful as the Griffin Shifter ability from the Shifter class that was added with that DLC, then this thing will be extremely useful. Specifically, their charge ability that doesn't require them to have a clear line of attack. But another really cool one, honestly, I think just being able to use a ranger in mounted combat with this griffin in particular is going to be really awesome, and I'm excited to see what people do with that one. But for number eight, we then have the Bladebound Magus. This one sounds really awesome, and it was inspired by Castlevania, apparently. And it's going to let you use the Magus class to make a pact with a sentient black blade. It's going to gain in strength every time you level up, and eventually it becomes powerful enough to act on its own, which means you don't need to use it personally. So basically, you'll get the Magus' normal ability to use a weapon and cast spells through that weapon, but they'll also have this black blade as well to act on its own, even if your Magus falls in battle. It will continue to act on its own. So that's pretty exciting. Now, depending on what the Magus has to give up to make use of this, will determine how good of a trade-off it actually winds up being, but just at face value, this sounds really, really cool, especially since the Magus is already a really strong class, with a lot of class fantasy associated with it. So seeing more here is pretty cool. Now, for number nine, we have the Mantis Zealot War Priest. Their blurb about this one mentions that the Mantis Zealot is a member of the Red Mantis, and if I'm remembering correctly, this is a group of assassins which worships a Mantis god that is itself the god of assassins, and it looks like this makes the War Priest simply a follower of that evil deity, which would 
presumably mean it'll be in the game now. And it looks like, in addition to the War Priest, just basic ability to take on a sacred weapon that grows stronger with them, which in this case seems to be dual-wielding sabers specifically, they'll apparently also be able to summon hordes of mantises that they'll be able to utilize in combat, which from the sound of their writing here will probably convey something like blur, which will simply make you harder to hit. And overall, I would say I love the class fantasy of a war priest in particular, but I don't necessarily always love playing as one, so it'll be interesting to see if this one in particular changes that at all. Now that brings us to number 10, and the one I am personally the most excited for, if you know me at all, which is the Kinetic Sharpshooter for the Kineticist. The Kineticist is, in my opinion, one of the most unique classes of the game, as it functions very differently from everything else, charging up power to utilize their Kinetic Blast, which can deal extreme damage, but they are a bit squishy, so they are very much so a glass cannon. But the Kinetic Sharpshooter takes away their ability to charge up before they attack. And instead, they'll be using a bow, and outside of combat, they'll charge up a quiver with their burn charges ahead of time, meaning that instead of charging up in combat, they simply utilize that pre-charged quiver to utilize their blast through their bow. Meaning that this basically takes away one of the weaknesses of a kineticist entirely, which is that charge up period, which makes their turns take longer than they would typically would otherwise because they're charging up to mitigate their burn cost. But this is done for you with this archetype. With the downside being that, I presume, once these charges are gone from your quiver for that combat, they're simply gone, period, and you won't get any more for the rest of combat, which means utilizing infusions at that point goes out the window. Combine that with a few infusions for this archetype, specifically in relation to a ranged weapon, and you've got an archetype that sounds like it can deal just insane burst damage out of the gate because you'll likely get all of your regular kineticist stuff without actually having to charge up first, with the downside being that after that initial burst you become substantially less effective. But I imagine you'll probably be able to build up some really ridiculous first few rounds with this one, and I'm very excited to try this out for myself because if it works any way like the way I'm thinking it will, this will be ridiculous. But that brings us to our final archetype and likely the most unique, I would say, with the Magic Deceiver for the Arcanist. And I've got to be honest with you, I don't know what to think of this one. Basically, they're going to be able to fuse spells together, specifically from the Arcanist spellbook, to create new effects. You'll be able to literally do this and have up to 10 fused spells in your spellbook at a time. They cannot be modified via metamagic. They gain all the descriptors of the initial spells, plus they are whatever level the highest level spell used in creating it is. And when you make the fused spell, you'll have to make the choices between, like, what does the spell's shape look like? What type of save, if you know it uses two conflicting ones, they'll actually be able to use? So I think it'll be interesting to see exactly how this one winds up working. And truth be told, I don't know exactly what to think of it. Because on one hand, I get the feeling this is likely another archetype that will not multi-class well, simply because of how it works. And I'm curious what other Arcanist abilities they'll have to give up in order to utilize this. So... This has the potential to be really, really cool, given that the Arcanists have a pretty cool spell list and combining a lot of those sounds really interesting. But how much of a headache it is to play this, where you're constantly going to be swapping out fused spells, most likely, on top of just learning what is going to be effective in what situation, etc., might be a lot to handle in an actual playthrough, but at least on paper, it sounds extremely cool to me. That is pretty much going to wrap it up for our 11 archetypes that are going to be coming with the Dance of Magic. Masks DLC not too long from now on June 13th. In the meantime, that is pretty much going to do it for this particular video. Do let me know what you think of all these down in the comment section below, but regardless of any of that, truly just thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. May you wander in wisdom and have an amazing day.